Welcome to today's tutorial. The purpose of this tutorial is to talk about Fall It Destiny. Within this training, I'm going to show you how to check out materials. I'm going to show you how to turn those materials back in. I'm going to explain the process of renewing an item. I'm going to talk about the process of changing a due date. I'm also going to show you how to print out a child patron status report. And then the last item we're going to talk about is how on earth do I know if this item is even checked out to anyone at all? <laughs> Maybe someone left it on your desk and you have no idea if it's checked out to someone at all. So we will explore that as well. As a teacher, there is more than one way that you can access the Fala Destiny portal. Right now, I'm inside of Clever. I'm an admin, so my Clever experience may look slightly different from yours. However, you should have access to the Fall It Destiny portal approximately in this region right here. The other method you could use to get into Fall It Destiny is to go to any one of our three school sites. Each of them have a similar construction. At the top of the website, in the ribbon, you will find where it says resources. You may hover or click depending on the website in this area and within the drop down menu, you will see right here where it says library login. Go ahead and click one time right here in order to access the library. It may feel somewhat tedious for you to go through all of those steps every time you wish to go to the library. If you wish, you are more than welcome to bookmark this resource. Use any method you normally use, or you can grab onto the padlock located right here and then drag it down into the bookmark bar. You'll notice how it appears right here. If you have deposited it into this bookmark bar in error, simply right click directly on that item and then click delete and it will disappear. When you have arrived into this space, you are still not logged in. On the right hand area, it says log in. Go ahead and click one time in order to log in. If this is your first time logging in, you will need to supply your username and password before signing in. However, if you are returning here, maybe you saved that information the last time that you were here. Go ahead and click log in and then get started. Now that you have logged in, you have three schools to choose from. For this tutorial, I'm going to choose Mountain Home School Charter. I'm going to click one time in order to enter that school. The next task that I'm going to perform is that I'm going to check a resource out to a student. On the top left, you'll notice that it says Home Dashboard catalog and circulation. We're going to choose circulation. On the far left, you'll notice that it auto populates to check out. And that's exactly what we want. We want to check out a material to a student. Our next objective is to locate the patron. We want to find the student. So utilizing the find box, we are going to type in the last name of that particular student. After you have typed in the whole last name or a portion of the last name, simply press enter on your keyboard and a list will populate. Our next objective is to click directly on the name of the student we would like to check this material out to. In the event you cannot find the student in question in the list that has populated, right underneath the find box you will see where it says only my patrons. You may need to tick or untick this box in order to locate a particular student. They might reside outside of this specific organization. For example, they're a part of one of our sister schools. So use this particular box if you cannot find the student you're looking for. Once you officially click on any one patron's name, the screen will change and you will notice any and all resources that have been checked out to a particular student. Once you have selected any specific student, you will have access to a list of all resources that are currently checked out to that user. In the next few steps, I'm going to check out a resource to a student and then I'm going to check that resource back in. For the purpose of today's tutorial, I have selected a board book from the library. You'll notice that it's sitting right here. 
On the bottom right corner, you will notice the barcode that has been designed by our school for this resource. The other item I'm using is a barcode scanner. This is the tool that I'm going to use in order to check the resource out to a specific student. For this task to function properly, I must ensure that my cursor is blinking inside of this box before I try to scan the barcode. If I scan the barcode and the cursor is not blinking inside of this box, it will not locate the record. I'm now going to scan the barcode. When I do so, a loud chime will appear, signifying that the record has been located. Once that record has been located, you'll notice that it appears in this section by the name of Checked Out. On the right hand side, you'll also notice that the due date appears. This is when that item is due back into the library. Just below this section, you will see a list of all the resources that are currently checked out to this user. Let me scoot back up the screen just a pinch. I'm going to come over here to the right hand side adjacent to the due date of the artifact that we just checked out to the student. The default for normal library books is a checkout time of two weeks. Curriculum is a default of one year. In the event you would like to override this for any reason, you would come into this space in order to make those adjustments. Next, I'm going to come over to this item where it says select date. Adjacent to this space, there is a drop down menu. From the drop-down menu, you would choose one of two responses. If you are adjusting the due date for this singular item, you're going to choose for this item. In the event, you want to override all due dates for every item this patron has, you would then choose for this patron. Please make sure that you choose the drop-down box and that you choose the appropriate item. Please avoid selecting until logout. Once you have made that selection from the drop-down box, you then have one of two options. You are either going to come to the calendar on the right and choose a specific date in the calendar or you are going to override that content by typing the information inside of this numeric box. Once you are finished, choose the save button on the right. In the event you have come into this space in error and you do not wish to override any dates at all, please choose the cancel button. I'm now going to model the process of checking an item back in. If you'll notice on the left, I'm in the checkout area. I want to move away from that space and go to the check in area. Just like last time, I need to make sure that my cursor is blinking inside of this box. If it's not blinking inside of this box, scanning the barcode isn't going to work. So my cursor is here. Let me go ahead and use my scanner in order to scan that barcode. Live on screen, I can see the status of this record. It is now checked in. This item is no longer associated with that specific patron. It is available in the library for checkout. In the next portion of the video, we're going to review the account of a learner where multiple resources are overdue. We are also going to renew a resource. On the left hand side, you can see how each of these items are overdue and that is signified with the red numbers. On the right hand side, you can see the original date under which each of these resources were checked out. Adjacent to this, you can see the Renew button. I'm going to click Renew right here on this resource. After completing that task, I will land on a screen that looks like this. At the top, you'll notice that the system is confirming that this indeed is the task that I would like to perform. One reason why this confirmation screen is so helpful is that you will notice how the Renew button and the Lost button are adjacent to one another and they are quite small. On occasion, you may accidentally click Lost when you didn't need to. While this task may feel tedious, it is quite helpful. In the event you click on one of these in error, simply choose No to abandon this choice. 
I'm going to click where it says yes. Now that I've confirmed my choice and I clicked yes, you'll notice here at the top of the screen that that item has been renewed. It is no longer overdue and it has a new return date. On occasion, it is quite helpful to have discussions with families about the total lost materials on their accounts. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to discuss the most efficient strategies for printing out reports so that families understand the resources that are currently lost. I scooted down the screen just a pinch. I am still on the checkout screen. You'll notice that I have no granular data stating the total lost resources. All I see are the resources that have been checked out. If too many resources stay out for too long unnecessarily, we may end up purchasing resources unnecessarily. To avoid this, let's make sure that overdue materials come back as quickly as possible. On the left hand side, let's head into patron status. Once we have clicked on patron status, we can scroll down the screen in order to achieve a granular view for this specific patron. What resources are checked out? What fines could be assessed for this particular individual? And what resources are missing? An item in the library is classified as lost when it has been overdue for 90 days or more. For example, curriculum is offered to families for an entire year. If any of those curricular pieces have been out of the library for a total of 15 months, they are now officially in the lost category. I'm going to scoot down the screen just a pinch. I want to draw your attention to this specific region so that you see the total fine amount for all items listed here. Let me bring clarity to this one talking point. While it says that fines can be assessed on the family, it doesn't mean that fines will be assessed on the family. Right now we are just recognizing that these materials have been out of the library a little bit too long. That's the only purpose of me drawing your attention to this space at this moment. Secondly, I wanna draw your attention to this space over here. This is the button you would use in order to print out this report so that the family has a takeaway with all of the necessary information. In the event an item has been delivered to you and you don't know if it's checked out to someone or if it's not checked out to someone, the next portion of this video is designed to show you how to figure that out. On the left hand side, we have already explored check out, check in, and patron status. Right now we're going to head over to copy status in order to find the status of any item in the library. Earlier in this video, I reiterated the importance of making sure that you click inside of this box. Please make sure that you see the cursor blinking before you move to the next step. Let's make sure that we have access to a scanner and we also need access to that resource. Now that you have access to the scanner and the text, simply scan that barcode. When you do that, the status of the record will show up here. On the left hand side, it currently indicates that this resource is not checked out to anyone. Right over here, you will notice the history of that item. If you're curious who had it last, the name of that student or teacher or family will appear right here. If you would like to go farther back in time to see the other individuals who checked this out, you can click over here where it says view history. You now have a historical record of other patrons who have used this resource before. Thank you so much for joining me for today's training and have a great day.